slept uh, pretty terrible last night, but I have lots of uh, supplies now. I got I got a mask. I got uh, two different types of hats. I got some sweet snacks. Pretty stoked about those. Bring my passport. Before we get into today's video, I did want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance in hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, Y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all have had a wonderful week. I hope everybody's doing good, getting outside, pushing it, drinking your water, all of that good stuff. I know you guys are doing great. So not to jabber on too long today, we have a lot to discuss. A lot has happened in the few days since I put out the last video with Brian Laundry, Gabby Petito situation. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the burner phones. Dog the Bounty Hunter has then gotten involved and we're going to talk about Brian Laundry's parents, how much they're aiding and abetting, the lawyer, da, 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 all of that. So just hang with me. Before we go into that though, I did want to bring up the situation of a young man who went missing and his body was found in the Illinois River the beginning of this month, Jelani Day. But I wanted to put his face in a hot topic video in hopes that more people will see it. His mother, oh my gosh, Miss Carmen, if you're watching this, I'm praying for you and I'm thinking about you. His mother is desperate for answers. Jelani Day was 25 years old, going to school to be a doctor. Very handsome, young man, loved his family, very, very close with his family. It is even said that his father has cancer and needs a bone marrow transplant. And Jelani was the only match and was planning on helping his father out in that way. Just a great dude. Well, how in the world did this six foot two, over 200 pound young young, healthy man's body end up in the Illinois River. That is what the family is asking for people's help. Any kind of tips, any good tips, anybody that has seen him. I love you so very much and I miss you. I love you, Jelani. Let me just give you guys a quick rundown and we'll talk more about this later, just in case you may have seen him, know something, you watch this and you go, wait a minute, I did see him on that day. He was with this and this person. So real quick, Bonnie Day was last seen on August 24th in Bloomington, Illinois. That morning at 921, they have him on a security camera going into a dispensary. On August 26th, two days later, Jelani's car was found an hour away in Peru, Illinois, from where he was last seen at that dispensary. So two days later, his car is found abandoned an hour away in a wooded area. Now his family says that he don't know anybody in Peru. There's no reason why he should be in Peru. Another weird thing is his wallet was found in a completely random different spot. And then later on, on September 4th is when his body was found floating in the Illinois River. So his stuff was spread out. If you happen to know him or seen Jelani or know anything or about anything, please contact the Bloomington Police Department and let them know. Okay, so let's talk about what's going on with Brian Laundry. So as most of y'all know, they are mostly looking for Brian in Florida. I mean, they're looking for him all over the world, but they've been looking for him at the Carlton Reserve in Florida. They've been to Northport, Brian's family's home, and now they're also in the Fort DeSoto Park. Well, Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd was asked his opinion on this whole case. And you guys, Grady Judd does not play. Gabby Petito, I'm not involved in that investigation. My team's not involved in that investigation. I could only speculate based upon news reports. And as you know, those are incomplete at best. And sometimes they can be fictionalized at worst. I can tell you that 
according to Florida law, when she was a victim of domestic violence originally, he would have been arrested. I can tell you at this sheriff's office when he showed up with her car and she was no place to be found, we would never have let him out of our custody that day. Other than that, I'm not sure where their investigation is. I really like how Grady Judd said that if Brian would have showed back up with Gabby's van and without Gabby, Brian would have never left their custody. Man, this whole situation would be totally different had it have been handled that way. All right, let's keep moving. So if you've watched the other videos I have done on this situation, you saw John Walsh say that Brian purchased a couple burner phones. Well, it has since come out that Brian, just a couple days before he disappeared, purchased a phone from AT&T. But when he went allegedly for this hike in the reserves, he left his wallet and his phone at home. So he purchased the phone and then he left it at home. According to Bertolino, Laundry purchased a cell phone on September 4th, three days after he returned home from that road trip. Laundry apparently left the phone behind when he went missing and the FBI is in possession of it. Bertolino claims it wasn't a burner phone, but does the purchase of an additional cell phone raise any suspicions to you? In and of itself, not really, but given the other circumstances surrounding his return after this trip, it certainly raises a, a lot of questions, um, even more, you know, even more additional questions that have already been raised by his return without his fiance. I truly cannot wrap my mind around what he is doing with this whole phone situation. When he was speaking to the cops during the domestic dispute incident between him and Gabby, he told the cops that he did not own a cell phone, went hitchhiking, and he got picked up by that young couple that we talked about in the first video, and he offered them $200 to take him 10 miles, and he made sure to tell them his name was Brian, and his fiance was back working on their vlog at the van, kind of like he was trying to make an alibi. It also reminds me, the neighbors saw Brian out taking an evening stroll with his parents. It's like he wanted people to see him. Now, don't get me wrong, you guys. I definitely do not think Brian is a super mastermind. I really, honestly, truthfully don't. But it definitely seems like his actions are very intentional. Again, um, for the laundry silence, the laundries did not help us find Gabby. They're sure is not going to help us find Brian. For Brian, we're asking you to turn yourself in to the FBI or the nearest law enforcement agency. Now, as most of you guys probably have heard, Dog the Bounty Hunter did get involved. The whole world is invested in finding Brian Laundry at this point. But Dog the Bounty Hunter somehow, some way, got word that Brian Laundry and his parents were at this campground. Fort Myers family found out they were camping right next to the Laundry family days after Gabby Petito disappeared. Tonight, you're hearing their reaction and seeing photos of their vacation only on NBC2. The family was staying at this campsite on the right while the laundries camped just yards away. All happened at the Fort DeSoto Park in Pinellas County. County records show the laundry family booked a campsite there on September 6th. Mary Newsom and her family arrived the exact same day. Only NBC2's Megan Myers is talking to the family about what they saw. To us and it's I see a red truck. One photo at a time. And that red truck was right there. We have a picture of it. The couple and their friends are now looking back at their captured memories, wondering if this man. You took a selfie of the four of us, and in the background there's a guy walking across the field. Could have been Brian Laundry. They kept to themselves. They were there, and then they weren't. Brian Laundrie's attorney says Brian, his mom, and his dad all arrived at the park on September 6th and left on September 7th. But a public records request from Pinellas County shows Roberta Laundrie, Brian's mom, checked out on the 8th. Okay, so let me get this straight. Brian's dad told his lawyer 
that they checked in on the 6th, but they actually checked out on the 7th. Why would they only stay one day? It is an hour and a half drive from their home in Northport, about an hour and a half, to this campsite. Why would they pack everything up in a camper, drive an hour and a half there just to spend one night away? Well, I don't know. The only thing I can think of is if they packed it up with full of supplies so they could drop the supplies off at different places, maybe at the campsite in the woods or maybe different places even on the way. Now, the people that stayed next to them said they were very quiet, stayed to themselves. But also what I find interesting is originally Roberta Laundry booked the campsite on the first through the third but she says that she canceled that they didn't go but they rebooked again the sixth through the eighth now i don't know typically people don't go camping just randomly for one night in the middle of the week for no reason i mean on a monday you drive an hour and a half with your camper with your son and your husband and this little tiny camper to spend one night away from the house seems pretty strange to me it also would make sense if you were trying to go to a campgrounds in the middle of the week when you're not expecting there to be as many people there as there are on the weekend. Listen, I have no idea what I'm talking about, you guys. I'm not a professional. I'm just trying to make sense of a very, very senseless situation. Very strange. If somebody I knew was missing, I wouldn't be going camping. All right, so now let's talk about the police calls. There was 46 calls made pertaining to Brian Laundrie's house during the dates of September 10th through September 27th. Two of those calls were made referring to Brian Laundrie's house on September 10th. Now, you guys remember, Gabby was not actually reported missing until September 11th. So why was there two cop calls to his house on the 10th? Well, we know one for sure was involving Gabby's father, and that was around 6.30 p.m. So there was a call on the 10th at around 4 p.m. and then one at 6.30 p.m. And the one at 6.30 p.m. is allegedly has to do with Gabby's father, I don't know. I mean, we could speculate. Did he, he did he show up there? Was he looking for his daughter? I cannot imagine how frustrated he was or felt being able to show up there and possibly seeing the van. Maybe the van was in the garage. I mean, we don't know if Brian is caught alive. Hopefully, we will find some answers and Gabby's family will get closure on all of this. But I just cannot imagine how frustrated he was during that time. Nevertheless, the incident report went down as problem settled or report submitted. Now, something that's very interesting that a lot of people are pointing out, I saw over there on Twitter and on Instagram, is that Brian's mom called 911 on the bounty hunter. You guys remember if you saw that where the dog, the bounty hunter, showed up on her front porch and news media was recording it, neighbors was recording it. And I guess he, I've never watched him until now. I'm seeing this stuff that he's all over the media with Gabby Petito situation. But Dog the Bounty Hunter is presenting himself in a way that he catches the people, he helps them out, but he still turns you in. I've never watched him before, but this is what he is saying. So the way he's presenting himself is a very nice man. I find it very funny, though, that Brian's mom called 911 on the Bounty Hunter don't you want your son to be found? If you guys remember, not long ago, about a week ago, Brian's lawyer released a statement saying that Brian's parents did not know where Brian was and that they really hoped the FBI could find him. Well, why wouldn't you want to talk to the bounty hunter? I mean, everything that you say to just a bounty hunter doesn't have to be used against you. I mean, he could really help your son if he was really lost and you were looking for him. I don't know, you guys, that's what I'm saying. It just... 
all of it is so strange. I also thought I would add that the bounty hunter did post on social media saying that he was on Brian's tracks and he feels like he has a hot lead at that DeSoto State Park that he is at. He also showed a campsite that he says he believes could have been Brian. It was like kind of off in the wooded area and there was like a little campfire and he thought that it could be him. He also showed a monster can that was not faded by the sun and did not look old at all. And then people were comparing the picture of the monster can that the dog found. I don't know what to call him, you guys. The dog, the hunter, that guy. The dog found compared to a picture of Roberta Laundry's bag, and it looked like she may have had the same can in it. I'm just adding this part because a lot of people are talking about it. I really have no idea if this has anything to do with Brian or not, but I added it for you guys. And the last thing that we're going to talk about today is the FBI back at the Laundry's house today. I don't know if you all saw it, but the FBI showed back up at the Laundry's house with a warrant to search the camper, which <laughs> finally, not trying to be rude or anything, but hello, I mean, what, over a month later? Now, see, this is what I mean. This is the good part about having people involved in these cases that is not law enforcement because they have to jump through all these hoops. They have to get legal paperwork to do anything, but people like the bounty hunter can just go right on out there and snatch you up. And before we go, I thought I would show you guys a couple little things. Okay, this picture right here that you guys were sending me in my DM, I thought this was so funny and not in an ugly, funny type of way, but like where's Baldo instead of like where's Waldo because he has a bald head. No shame in bald heads. My husband's got a bald head. We love all our bald-headed men out there, but I just thought it was funny because we're looking for him. Laugh. Don't take life so seriously. It's kind of funny. And then the next thing is people are passing around these pictures of this t-shirt that says, I am not Brian Laundry." For all of the guys that look like him, I can only imagine... If you saw the video that was in the intro of this video, that was actually a TikTok guy who looks kind of like Brian Laundry. It is wild. Everybody's looking for Brian, but you know, we got to find him. I mean, it's just got to be done. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I'm so curious too, for all of y'all that think Brian Laundry had nothing to do with Gabby's death. Why do you think all these things are happening? I would love to read it. Everybody, make sure you guys are kind to each other in the comment section. I love reading you guys' point of views, whether I agree with it or not. And I will be looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say. As always, my loves, please do not forget to like this video. For every like is a vote to bug the laundry's house so we can hear what the mom and dad talk about in private. So like it. <laughs> And thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. And I will see you guys next week. Love you guys. Bye.